Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alton. One of the things I love to do on this channel is to bring you new micro brands. And today I have one for you from the UK. Now this watch is beautiful. It has a Miyota 9000 movement in it, sapphire crystal, AR coating. It's a great looking everyday watch, but it has one big catch. Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we have for you a brand new micro brand yet again. This is another micro brand that was born out of the pandemic and it is based in the UK. The watch before us is called the Manston and there's different versions of the Manston. There's the Jet Black Jet MS01, the Blueprint MS02, the Campaign, which is a white version, MS03. And here before us, we have the MS04, which they call the Classic. Now the Classic has a beautiful creamy dial. It reminds me of a Tim Hortons Double Double. That one is for you Canadians in the crowd. It is a really dynamic, almost enamel looking dial, although it is not enamel. And the printing on the dial is nice and clean and clear and crisp. Even under macro, things hold up really well. A standard on the dial is the four applied numerals, the 12, 3, 6, and 9. They have a, a matte texture, almost a bead blasted texture under macro to them. And I, and I just love the black on cream. It looks very, very good. So often you will see a nickel color on the dial against a backdrop that is a lighter backdrop, a white or a cream or a light gray, and you find that they disappear. That does not happen in this watch. It is highly legible. Now, part of that legibility comes from the crisp printing. The other part of it comes from the cardinal markers that are oversized. And another part of it comes from the fact that the watch itself is actually pretty oversized. So this watch is actually a 45 millimeter watch. The lug to lug is 52 millimeters. It's only 12 millimeters thick, including the crystal, which I think is not bad. The case of course is 316L steel. It's got a Miyota 9015 automatic under the hood, which is great. That is a reliable high beat movement, which is easy to replace should there be any issues with it. The crystal is sapphire with AR coating. And it's got 100 meters of water resistance, which I think is pretty good. Now the loom on this is Superluminova C3, but it is more of a dressier, sporty piece, and I wouldn't consider it having loom befitting, say, a Seiko diver. Now this is their first piece, as I mentioned, and they want it in everyday sort of watch. And I asked them, what kind of watch is this? It's got large oversized cardinal markers like a pilot's watch. It's got a bit of a field vibe, especially in this cream color. It's got a bit of a sports watch vibe. But then when you look at the case, the case is primarily polished. At least the bezel and the top of the lugs are highly polished. The sides are brushed with vertical brushing. And so you could even say that this is a little bit of a dressy piece. Novel Watches said, forget about all of those categories. It's just a everyday piece that you can wear in multiple situations. And for the right wrist, I think they're absolutely right. I'd say the finishing on the Manston is actually pretty good. The polishing is well done. The brushing is even if just a little bit coarse. The dial has a lot of depth to it in that cream look. And I love the applied indices. It just gives it a bit of a more premium vibe. The watch strap is actually pretty great too. It's a genuine leather strap. I don't think it's vegetable tan leather or anything like that, but it's it's thick, but it's it's not uncomfortable. It doesn't seem to require any break in. It has a lot of presence, which you need with a watch this size. The buckle is a little bit oversized, but I do think it is well made. And I love the double tank system. Hamilton and other watches often use this. It just provides a more comfortable wearing experience and it also makes sure that your strap doesn't wear out prematurely. Now on my eight and a half inch wrist, the strap is on the second from last set of holes. If I want to wear it just a little bit tighter, if I want to put it on the last set of holes, it's a little bit looser. For me, probably somewhere in the middle is the perfect fit. So with an eight and a half inch wrist, anyone I would say eight and a half or lower will find this to be a perfectly acceptable size until perhaps you get to the very small wrist. 
Flipping over the watch, you'll see the Miyota movement there. It is an automatic movement with hacking and hand winding. Again, it is a high beat movement. They have decorated the rotor, which I think people always appreciate. And of course, with that see-through case back, you'll be able to check that movement out anytime you'd like to. The crown is signed, which is a nice touch. The crown is definitely appropriately sized for this sort of watch, and it's easy to use, it's easy to manipulate. It has a date complication. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this date complication, but we'll get back to it in a minute. So what are my picks and my nitpicks? Well, I'd say for picks, I like the case. I like the finishing, I think it's well done. The signed crown is a nice touch. For me, the creamy dial and the applied markers, though, are the real standout feature on this watch. The use of sapphire crystal and the choice of movement are appropriate at this price point. And I think the strap's pretty great, too. As for nitpicks, let's just jump right into the elephant in the room. This is a big watch. I want to show it to you against some other watches of various sizes, ranging from 38 millimeters up to, well, this one here. This is a 45 millimeter sports watch and sports watches wear big and, and it's all dial. So when you wear this, you have to be prepared for some wrist presence. And I know a lot of you people out there, you love a nice big chunky watch, even though sizes are trending down towards 36 millimeters these days, it seems. On my eight and a half inch wrist, I think I can pull it off no problem. However, I will say this, I wish it was 40 millimeters. I think this is a great looking watch. I really do. And if this was in 40 millimeters, oh man, I think it would appeal to a lot of people. But for those of you with a bigger wrist and you've been searching for an everyday casual watch from a micro brand, I, I think you might just appreciate this one here before us. I kind of wish the numbers around the dial, the 5, 10, 20, and so on, were just a little bit bigger but that's because of my 45 year old man eyes, I suppose. And I know I say this in every review, but I wish it had horizontal brushing as it just seems to lend itself to the lines of a case. But of course that's personal preference. The loom isn't great either. It's not bad, it's a quality loom, but I'm not sure how much is applied and there's not a lot of places to actually apply the loom. I noticed that after a five minute test, there wasn't a whole lot of loom left on the dial and I'll throw up a couple other watches with it and you can see what I'm talking about. And then there's that date complication. It's not a deal breaker and sometimes I really like a simple date, but there is just so much real estate on this dial that the date seems like it's missing something. Maybe it needs a border or some dynamics to the cutout. I'm not sure what it is. And I definitely wish that it was color matched. In fact, I would go so far as to say, I just kind of wish it didn't have a date at all. Now I always talk about picks and nitpicks and a lot of these really are nitpicks, but the size is going to be a serious issue for many of you. If you don't have a larger wrist or if you don't really enjoy a lot of wrist presence, if 52 millimeters lug to lug is going to hang over your wrist, then this isn't for you. But I think you should definitely check this one out if you have a bigger wrist. Now, Avlo watches haven't set the final price for the Manston. They're looking at around 300 pounds, but they're also talking about having significant discounts on the Kickstarter campaign when it goes live. So what I would suggest to you is if you appreciate this design, like them on Instagram, just kind of give them a follow, wait for that Kickstarter campaign, see how much the final price is going to be on Kickstarter. And if it's something that you enjoy, I think you'd be happy with it. I really do. Thank you so much for watching and a big thanks to Avlo Watches for lending this one in. Please let me know what you think down in the description. And hey, if you feel like giving this a like and subscribe, go right ahead and do so. I will not stop you because these likes and these follows really go a long way to propping up my fragile ego. Have a great day.